Okay, the University of Florida is on its way from its locker room. A note on press sessions tomorrow, Virginia will be at 135. That's Virginia at 135, followed by Florida at 220. The winner of game three will be at 310, and the winner of tonight's final game at 355. So we'll get underway tomorrow at 135. 355. And also a reminder that the Florida locker room right now will be open for the next 30 minutes. So if you'd like to go over there after this or during this. And uh, actually both locker rooms are open for 30 minutes. Okay, congratulations to Florida and welcome. We'll ask Coach White to make an opening statement, then we'll open it up to questions. Please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone. Coach White. Uh, great feeling. You know, we, we, this, this team's had a, a rough go at it the last 10 days or so. Um, been through a bunch. And then uh, we going back to, uh, at some point, I know we'll stop talking about Johnny Bunu, but uh, you know, a couple weeks before then, you, you've got the, 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 the um, unbelievable misfortune, obviously, with John. So th this team in the last three, four weeks has, has, has gone through a lot. And so this was, this was great for us to get back uh, on the right side of the win-loss column. I thought we had a really good week of practice. Um, our focus and, and our discipline, especially defensively, was really good to start the second half. And I thought that was the difference of the game, uh, in the game for us. I thought we really locked in. Um, you know, it's... It feels great to advance in the NCAA tournament. East Tennessee State uh, was terrific. Uh, they, they play extremely hard. They're really athletic. They had a great year. Congrats to those guys. We've been there. My staff and I are very familiar with that level and how hard it is to be here. And then, uh, and obviously, they showed that uh, they very much belong um, amongst some of the best teams in the country. They, uh, they had a great year. Congrats to them. Questions? Front row on our far right. Before I ask my main question, can you guys say what was cracking everybody up when you came out for the opening tip-off? Everybody was laughing. Devin, can you remember? Uh, it's okay. I, you can throw me under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we was in a huddle, and we were listening to the song uh, by Migos. If y'all know who Migos is, are. are. Uh, so I do now. I didn't know who sang it. <laughs> yeah, Migos. <laughs> and it's called Pipe It Up. He was like, come on, Coach White was like, come on, guys, let's pipe it up. I love that song. <laughs> he was like, what? <laughs> so it was just funny. He just, he just got us going. Yeah. I was wondering, at the, at the beginning, Mike, did, uh, did that, was that the start you would, you would really script it out and really had hoped that they would get out to? Yeah, probably the first 10 minutes and, and the second 20 minutes. You know, so that of the four parts of the game, the, the first, third, and fourth, I thought we were, we were pretty good. And, East Tennessee State got the, got the better of us in, in that second quarter of the game, if you will. Uh, they got it going with some um, – with, with Cromer hit a couple hard shots. Boy, he's, he's very, very talented. And uh, we had a couple live ball turnovers. We had a couple late, uh, late shot clock situations where we got a little stagnant, uh, held the ball a little bit. Um, and then I thought we were in a hurry a little bit two times uh, – excuse me, uh, a few times a little bit too much offensively with balls going through our hands out of bounds. Uh, but we settled in in the second half. Um, but I, I, I like to start for sure, and I really like to start the second half. 
We'll go to the center aisle, but real quick, I'm sorry, Pat, if, a reminder that please do not shoot any video in here, please. Pat? Yeah, uh, Devin, uh, can you talk about getting off to that fast start for you personally, getting the steal and the dunk, and did that kind of get your confidence going? Oh, yeah, that, that got me going uh, real early. Uh, my team, we were just trying to play defense, and uh, I just just try to beat everybody down the court. Uh, transition defense is one of, the, uh, one of their emphasis and uh, what they need to work on. So I, I just try to just try to run as hard and play as hard as I can. And my teammates found me when when they did. <laughs> we're we're going to go across the center aisle in the back. I'm surprised. Would you guys talk about the quickness difference? It just seemed that you guys had the quickness at just about every position, particularly in the second half when you turned it on defensively. Devin? Can you repeat that question for me, please? Yeah, uh, it seemed that you guys had a real quickness di difference, differential, in, in the, especially in the second half defensively. Would you talk about how you used your quickness and, and, and what, what the plan was with that? Uh, we just knew we had to play harder. We had to uh, rev it up a little bit. Uh, we got comfortable at the end of the uh, first half, as Coach said, and uh, we just knew we had to uh, we just try to take it to a new level, so we just try to be more aggressive and try to get to every loose ball and uh, just just play just play our best basketball on defense, and it, it translate translate into the offense. So that's what that's what we try to emphasize when we got in the locker room. Kaveris. Oh, um, I was kind of like what he said. You know, we got to rev up our our defense. Um, based on the scouting report, we knew their tendency, so it was all about exploiting that as best we could. We'll go to the second row on our right. Uh, this one's for Kavarius. Um In their first position of the game, it looked like you got the ball stolen from you. Can you take us through what happened then and then how you turned it around and were able to take away five, six steals from them? Um, coach pretty much explained it to me. He's um, like, kind of like slowed down a little bit because he could tell I was a little sped up. And then from there on, I just kind of like settled in. That's pretty unusual uh, for a center. Do you practice that? Um, it's not so much practice. I guess I was very fortunate tonight. It's piped up. The gentleman right next to you had a question. Uh, Coach, uh, how was Devin able to have such a dominant game tonight? What was he doing that was really working out there on the floor? Uh, I thought I thought he started the game by he said it already. Just uh, you know, we we've challenged him all year, and he's challenged himself to get out in transition to really run uh, when he wants to. He he runs like a deer, and when he's in space, um, he's got the ability to to. To get his feet set and make jumpers, and, and he can really straight line drive it, of course. And uh, if he can take off before physicality uh, and explode to the rim, he, he usually finishes or draws, draws fouls. I mean, he's, he's a really talented guy. And um, I thought it started with transition offense, just running, just getting out and running with, with urgency. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it really carried over through, throughout most of the game. I thought he hit a couple big threes, if I'm not mistaken here. I haven't really studied the, the sheet yet, but. Um, they were both early second half, right? Maybe one mid second half. Yeah. Uh, in, in transition again. So and that, that's where we're at our best. And so those were big shots for us. Our far left on the outer aisle, and then we'll come back over to the right. For the players, were you guys nervous at all? First NCAA tournament game for both you guys? Devin? At all, at the, certainly at the beginning. Um, I, I personally wasn't that nervous. You know, it's just another game to me. Um, but uh, I don't know about Kavarius. Um, I could say I was a little nervous, you know. Um, I was too, okay. <laughs> being out here. It was, it was something new, you know. We were playing for someone much greater than ourselves, playing for each other, and now it's like where it really counts. And secondly, the defense in the second half, they only had six field goals, I think, through the first 17, excuse me, 17 minutes of the second half. Was there something that you guys were doing differently, or were you just more committed on that end and just better on that end for that stretch? Uh, we just, we just, we knew if we played defense, it would help us on offense. Uh, we know our, our identity as a team, and we knew we had to regroup uh, because at the end of the first half, uh, we slacked on defense. So we knew we had to come out the first four minutes, the most important minutes of the game in the second half to make a difference. So we just knew we had to come out there and, and uh, intensify our defense. OK, our far right. Yeah, Coach White, Tony Cornish, Jr., WCJB, TV hey, in uh, Gainesville. Your thoughts on Chris Gioge's performance tonight with the 14 point effort and the five rebounds. And Devin, your reaction as well, little man getting five rebounds out there today. I mean, you get Devin seven, you beat him. You beat him up. I was hoping he beat you by one, he could talk smack to you. <laughs> Chris was great, you know, Kavaris is right here, so let me say, while he's here, six deals with his activity, he had a monster block late in the game. They were chipping in the lead. I want to say it was like eight or 10, and, and we had a live ball turnover that he just 
erase that mistake. And that, that was huge. I thought he was really good. Uh, Casey did a lot of good things. Kenyon Berry comes in and, and, and executes at the end of the game, getting himself open and, and converting at the foul line. Chris Joseph was terrific. He was, he was really good, I would say. Um, in terms of, of, of the game ball, it would probably go to Chris and, and both of these guys. Uh, unbelievably active, uh, utilized his speed, getting a couple loose balls, which led to layups for himself. Um, and just he, he just rebounds bigger than he is. He's just, he, Chris, Chris has always been a tough kid. And in my opinion, in the last few months, he's really grown into becoming a really tough kid. And he's, he's just, for whatever reason, um, he's embraced that. And defensively and on the glass, Again, this is a guy that, I don't know, six, eight weeks ago gets a triple-double. So um, I'm glad he's a Gator. And I think you wanted Devin to answer that as well, was it? Uh, I mean, I know what Chris is, uh, is capable of every day. Um, he has like a 36-plus <laughs> inch vertical for a little guy. We're athletic. So I knew that if we just boxed out for him, he can get any rebound he wants, you know. So just for him to come down there and help us rebound when we're, we're a little smaller, it, it just helped. It just helped us and win this game. So, shout out to Chiefs. Okay, we have four more minutes, so we're going to get as many as we can. We'll go on our far left, and then we got one in the back. Uh, Gene Fournette from the Times Union. Coach, hey, could you just talk a little bit about the versatility of this team? You know, Kavon doesn't have a good game. Uh, yeah. Barry didn't have a good game, but yet it didn't. It didn't seem to matter. Yeah, I didn't think. Uh, I didn't think Canyon played poorly. I, I, and I, the one thing I, that I like about Kavon is he goes one for eleven instead of one for four. He stayed aggressive, and that's what I asked him to do. Um, you know, he, he, he gets four assists, zero turnovers. He defended at a high level. Uh, Bradford, in my opinion, Cromer, Cromer gets all the headlines deservingly, so I, Cromer's a terrific player. Bradford might be their most valuable player. And Kayvon started on him and guarded him for uh, a lot of the game. I, I, I thought both those guys were good in, in, in different areas, not necessarily scoring it. Um, but that's, that's kind of who we are. We've had, what, eight, eight different leading scorers. Um, and it takes a special group to be able to be successful while that happens. Uh, we don't have, Kayvon's not hanging his head right now. Kayvon's happy that we won. And Devin would be the same way if Kayvon was sitting here right now. We have one in the back row on our right. Christian Rui, WFTV in Orlando. Mike, first NCAA tournament when you come off and your brother's sitting right there. Can you yeah. just take me through that moment? Yeah, really cool. And before I, I see my brother, I, I, uh, I hear my mom and my wife, you know, on the other side, you know, screaming crazy stuff. and. I get to see my kids who I haven't seen all week. So it's really neat. It's cool to have my brother here in Orlando and uh, for all the, uh, um, you know, my parents, uh, grandchildren to all be hanging out. But it's on to Virginia. Front row right here. Uh, coach White, an anonymous coach called you guys faster than John Wall, the fastest backcourt he's ever seen. How important is that to you guys throughout the season? And not only that with Chose and Hill, how well they play with each other when mm -hmm. they're on the court at the same time. They're, they're really fast and they, Sometimes they show their speed and quickness getting to the rim. Sometimes they show it in transition offense, drawing two or three guys, getting other guys' shots. Sometimes they just show it. Uh, they, they make defending a high-level player look a little bit easier than it should be despite being undersized because their foot speed is so quick. Um, Casey did a really good job on Cromer at times. Chris Chiosa did a really good job on Cromer at times. Uh, and, and this is the third year now where they've played at least um, in spurts together. It's a luxury to have as a coach, of course. We're only going to get three more questions in uh, over here on our far left. Yeah, Mike, um, how important is this for you? I mean, it, you've waited so long to get your first NCAA yeah. tournament, to win the game, and to get the program's name out there. Uh, it's, it, it's great for Florida. It's great for Florida basketball. I mean, it, Florida was going to get back, regardless of who's sitting right here. You know, so it's really neat. Personally, my staff's all fired up. Hey, we got the tournament. We won a game. We're ready to move on to the next one. I'm way more pleased for our guys, you know, especially our seniors. Last go around, Casey Hill, everything he's been through to get back to the tournament and then to win a game and to advance and play his best basketball right now. Skylar Rimmer, Canyon Berry, Justin Leon was in junior college two years ago. He's starting for an NCAA tournament team that's advancing. It's neat. It's a neat group to work with. You know, I'm proud to coach these guys. And, and uh, it's neat to have at least one more game to coach them. Back row center aisle and then the back row on the left. For the players, uh, how pleasant was it at halftime after the way you played the last eight minutes of the, of the first half? Was he, was he a nice guy or was he a little bit hot under the collar? Kivarius, you want to start with that one? Well, I mean, any coach would probably be a little upset when a team doesn't play their capabilities. 
So he pretty much, you know, we went back there, studied the film. He showed us that we weren't playing up to our full potential. And I guess after watching the film, we all saw that. So we came out second half a lot stronger. Devin? Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, Coach, he obviously wasn't happy with our performance at the end of the first half, you know. Uh, but he didn't really have to say much. Uh, we knew we, we, uh, what we were doing wrong. And watch, when we watched film, like, we, we could see ourselves doing the wrong things. And then we knew if we kept doing those things, we weren't going to be successful tonight. So uh, he just laid it out for us, like, hey, yeah, if y'all want to go home, then lay it down right now. But if y'all want to advance, y'all know these, these are things you need to do to be successful. And uh, we listened to him, took that in, and came out in a big second half. We'll take the final question. Remember, the locker room is open for about another 15 minutes in the back. Yeah, for either player, both guys. Uh, the last four or five days, all you've heard about is you've lost three or four. You guys were a popular pick to get upset. Uh, you know, everybody's picking you. How gratifying is it to, to just come out and play like you did, especially in the second half, and kind of silence some critics? Devin? Uh, it, it feels good um, knowing that we lost three or four games and uh, we were picked to be up the first upset uh, of the tournament. Uh, it, I put a chip on our shoulder, you know. But uh, we can't stop here. I mean, this is only one game. We still have how many, how many more games we got? <laughs> Five more. We still got a lot more basketball to be played. So, uh, I mean, it feels, it feels good to get this one, but uh, we still got to get back to work, uh, watch some film tonight, and be ready to play Saturday. Kivarius, any thoughts? No, not really. You were at all. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Chris. East Tennessee State is on its way into the room, so if you'd like to be here for that press session, please come over immediately. They are on their way in. Okay, we'll ask Coach Forbes to make an opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. Coach Forbes. Okay, congrats to Florida. I thought they played a, an outstanding game. You know, they turned us over, and I was really worried about that going into the game, live ball turnovers, and they turned a lot of those into points, and that's really hard to defend. And I thought their length and athleticism, you know, gave us problems in pretty much the entire game. Um, they hurt us on the offensive glass, and those, you know, that's those are big things. And then the you know, we just got beat badly at the free throw line. And uh, I think they're like 24 and 0 when they shoot 27 free throws, and they shot 27. So um, all my hat's off to them. Uh, they played a really, really well, uh, well played game. 
you know, I'm really proud of our team um, to get here. And, uh, you know, they've battled all year long. And it's a testament to these guys up here how hard they've battled. We battled really hard in that game. I've, you know, going into halftime, I felt good because we were only down one. And I don't think we played great. Uh, came out in the second half, ran a play, TJ banged a three. We took the lead. And I felt like we were in good shape. But to their credit, they answered the bell. And, they made some big threes. They didn't make a three in the first half and made seven in the second. That was a big separator, the threes and the freeze, free throws. But uh, we're proud of what we've accomplished, 27 wins this year, and nothing to hang our head about. Questions, please. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone. Center aisle. <coughs> what, did, what did they do different uh, after you guys finally got the lead and they made those Bunch of threes in a row. Was it well, just got, the difference they, of them going in, or? Yeah, I think they got out in transition. You know, they got some really good looks at it. Um, it we, I thought we did a great job of guarding them in the half court, especially when we settled down. They started out the game seven for eight, and then they were five for like twenty-four or something like that in the half. So, I, th their threes really a lot of those came in transition. When you talk about the difference at the free throw line, is that? Whose fault was that? Is that your fault for not getting there? Or? Well, I think we were trying. You know, we were, we, we were driving else? the ball. And, uh, you know, they did a good job, obviously, of not fouling us. And, uh, you know, we didn't do a great job of that. And that's always an issue, you know, especially in big games. You know, you got to get to the free throw line. And I felt like they did a really good job of, of getting there. And then, you know, we got, to the, we got to the basket a lot of times, and they blocked shots in transition. And we didn't make the right plays. And those things add up. Other questions? Back row. Yeah, for, for both players, how difficult are they in that they've got so many options? TJ? Uh, like you say, they're just a great team, well-coached team. And uh, they made a lot of shots, and they bothered us with their length. And like I said, they're just a great, great and well-coached team. AJ? Um, you know, I'm just piggybacking on what he said. You know, they're a well-coached team. You know, they're fast. You know I mean? They can, um, a few players can spread the court. I mean, you can't foul them. We put them on the free throw line. You know what I mean? They just, you know, they made plays. You know, I. I think uh, we did a good job on Allen. But like you said, Robinson really hurt us, you know, and he hurt us in a lot of different ways. You know, he hurt us with his length and transition. He made some threes. He uh, got to the basket. I thought he played a really, uh, a really good game. I, I was impressed with him. But I thought we did a pretty good job on Allen. But you can't just stop one guy. They've, they've got other options. Center aisle again. This is for the players. Um, you guys were all excited about getting into the NCAA tournament. Did it live up to what you expected, all the excitement and the, the actual game? AJ, can you start with that? I mean, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm, I just played in the NCAA tournament, you know what I mean? When I was a, when I was a freshman, you know what I mean? Um, we didn't get there in sophomore, we didn't get there junior, we didn't get there to end it, you know what I mean? In my run here at ETSU, NCAA tournament, I mean, what else? You know what I mean? And to play Florida and the way we played them, the first part of the game, I mean, what else can you ask for, really? TJ? Uh, first off, I'd just like to say it's just a blessing to be here at the NCAA tournament. And uh, like, like me and my teammates say, uh, we, we just try to enjoy every moment because, you know, none of us have ever been here before. And, and it lived up to the moment. Like, we, we had a time of our lives here. Well, guys, you can be real proud of a great season. Thank you for joining us. Okay, right, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. All right, fellas. Good job. Thank you.